Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're going to be discussing uh, the length of bayonets and uh, at some point in history they went from long to short and why. So, originally uh, bayonets were designed to protect infantrymen from cavalry or cavalry charges and uh, bayonets were very, very long. So, here I've got a French Chasseau bayonet which is probably one of the longest bayonets out there. And I can't even fit it all in my uh, in my shot. It's essentially a freaking saber. It's huge. And um, complaints were it was a little bit heavy. So the next one, the Epe, the um, Gras bayonet was a bit shorter, not by much. But it's pretty typical of Victorian era bayonets that they were very very long. The idea being that the uh, the length of the rifle and the bayonet combined had to be long enough for the average height or average size infantryman to dehorse a cavalryman, to uh, take him down from his horse. Generally, the idea was that a rifle and bayonet combined had to be five and a half to six feet in length. Uh, so if you had a shorter rifle, you required a longer bayonet to achieve that. But if you had a really, really long rifle, you could get away with a shorter bayonet. There was also the idea back in the day that uh, when dueling with a uh, bayonet with another instrument of the bayonet, <laughs> uh, the soldier with the longer combined rifle bayonet would win because he would stick his opponent first. Uh, First World War proved in reality, uh, once you got inside that initial thrust, the shorter bayonet won, but um, we'll get to that shortly. So the very first short bayonet, uh, interestingly enough, is what we have here and that's the Mauser 7184 made in 1884. Uh, I don't know exactly why they went for a short bayonet. I don't know the history behind it too much. I've still got to research it, do a video on it. But uh, for whatever reason they did make one, maybe the rifle itself was reasonably long. I don't really know. I'll be pretty interested to read up on that. But that's the first of the short bayonets and it came at a very interesting uh, time in history, 1884. Uh, a couple of you might have already noticed that or realised that in 1886 was the um, introduction of smokeless powder. Smokeless powder meant that we could have shorter rifles. Shorter rifles meant we had to have longer bayonets to dehorse cavalrymen. So the idea of a shorter bayonet back then was really not on the table. Everyone was going to shorter rifles and longer bayonets. Uh, like we'll look at the British, they had the Lee Metford with the pattern of 1888 bayonet which was reasonably short then they adopted the short magazine Lee Enfield a couple of years later and uh, they went to a longer bayonet because they were concerned that the um, pattern 1888 bayonet with the short rifle was simply too short to be effective so they adopted the uh, the pattern 1907 which was a much longer bayonet anyway that's a rant I'll try to come back to where I was um, so Leading into World War One, everyone has, or well, most countries have very, very long bayonets. A couple don't. There are a couple of exemptions, like um, I think it's uh, Serbia, Austria, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They were using short ones. Again, I don't know the, their reason for it. And Switzerland, uh, with their Schmidt Rubin um, bayonets, they were pretty short as well. But uh, during World War One, mechanized warfare really made cavalry obsolete. Uh, cavalry charges, yeah, there were a couple at the start of the war where they didn't do terribly well and they didn't last all that long. And um, with cavalry really being removed from the scene, there wasn't a terrible, terribly great reason to uh, keep a long, long bayonet. So long bayonets were also found to be really impractical in the trenches, uh, in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, um, when moving around in uh, wagons or vehicles, um, on ships, and just in close quarters in general, long bayonets were found to be more burdensome than they were worth. And it was quite often found that in the trenches in particular, uh, if you're fighting with a bayonet, if you missed your first thrust, the enemy would be within your range. You wouldn't be able to uh, use your bayonet, and uh, if he's got a handy little knife or a trench club, you're cooked. On top of that, the uh, longer bayonets were reasonably uh, heavy and uh, weight is always an issue when you're looking at soldiers. You want to make their gear as uh, light and portable as possible and you don't want something really, really long getting caught on everything. 
So World War One was really a bit of a wake-up call, and nearly every country in the world uh, either shortened or adopted a short bayonet as a result of the First World War, uh, with uh, two exemptions being <laughs> Australia and Japan were the only ones to go into World War Two with long bayonets, and I guess you could argue Russia as well with their socket bayonets, but they adopted SVT-40 bayonets for their SVT-40s, and they were reasonably short, so I won't count them. For whatever reason, Australia's always been behind the curve. I don't know why. Um, so there were a lot of detriments to having a long bayonet, and another one I haven't really covered off is uh, shooting a rifle with a bayonet fixed. It affects the harmonics. It affects your accuracy. A longer bayonet, a heavier bayonet, is going to have more of an effect um, than a shorter, lighter one. So, leading into World War II, pretty much everyone is adopting something nice and short. Like the Yanks were coming into World War II with their Model 1905 bayonet, which they shortened down into the M1 and started producing the M1 throughout the war. And um, after the war, or well, funnily enough, after the Second World War, pretty much every country in the world released their next rifle without a bayonet, and then pretty much every single one immediately adopted a bayonet um, straight after and learnt their lesson. But everyone sort of went to short little handy knife bayonets like um, this little Canadian C7 here. So, sorry it's a bit of a rambly video, but that's pretty much why uh, long bayonets sort of uh, became obsolete. And uh, what I've got here actually is an example very very similar to what was the very last issued long bayonet so the very very last one was the um it's for the fn 49 for venezuela they ordered uh a fn 49 uh model of 1924 which is what we have here bayonet so we've got a belgian model of 1924 and this is pretty much identical to or is identical to what the other uh, venezuelans ordered with their FN-49s in uh, 1949 and that was that was it after that no one was using long bayonets everyone was on to the uh, the short boys I thought it'd be interesting to um, have the first of the short and the last of the long here in the uh, same shot anyway guys if you can uh, think of anything else uh, that uh, might be relevant or if I've made any errors, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear from you and thanks for watching.